came to the States, Feuermann seems to have been enamored by the United States and by New York in particular. And the buildings and all the different kinds of people. He was apparently really taken with jazz. And my grandmother joined him on tour before my mother was born. She um, said that she came on the boat, you know, and he was already there in New York and he greeted her. And the first thing, he didn't even let her go to the hotel. She said she went straight. She thinks it must have been to Harlem to see a big band. And I remember when Oma told me this, I was like, oh my God, so this was like the mid 30s. I mean, you could have been seeing Cab Calloway. You could have been seeing Duke, early Duke Ellington, who's to say? I mean, it was she didn't know, and we were trying to figure out what club he might have taken her to. But I love this idea that my grandfather Feuermann, way before my mother was even a thought, was captivated by black American music. So my mother was born in Zurich in 1938. Obviously, they went, I guess they went to Palestine initially as an avenue to get to New York. Right. Uh, they came to New York. Uh, the first thing Feuermann did was to take her probably to Harlem, where she heard Well, no, that band. was when they were on tour. Ah, that was even before. That was before my mother. Ah, Once see. my mother was born, they came in, They came to the United States in 1939. Uh -huh. My mother was born in February 38. Uh -huh. um, and I think, as far as I understand, I get a little confused with the chronology of where they lived exactly. I know at a time they lived on 82nd and Madison because we grew up on 82nd and Broadway. Uh -huh. And when we would be on the other side of town, my mother would be like, right there. And she would tell me that her, her month, grandmother, Emma, would sit at the table and they had servants, of course, and she had like a little bell that she would ring and someone would come and be like, would you like more tea or whatever? So this was Reifenberg money, oh, not Feuermann money. No, there wasn't any Feuermann money. <laughs> Well, by that he time, was a he musician. was a celebrated cellist, yes. <laughs> he was, but he still, it seems like his earnings, from what I understand from the mm -hmm. book when I read it, his earnings were always a source of great concern, and I think his earning power really, in the last few years of his life when he came to the States, that's when it really started to take a really nice turn for the better. Um, but the money, the mega money in that family was the Reifenberg money. Yeah. And I'm not exactly, there was a, I mean, there's so many stories, how did the money get out, and my grandmother's brother was really the one responsible for getting it out, and then I never met him, because it was all kinds of family difficulties around, probably because of money, so I don't know a, a lot of those details, but yes, they came to the States, they lived in Manhattan briefly, and then they moved to Scar Rye, New York, mm -hmm. and they were having a house built, oh. and Nobody knew, of course, that he was going to die. He wasn't sick. Um, but they were having a house built in Rye, New York, so they were somewhere in Westchester living while this house was being built. And my mother used to, my mother, Feuermann's daughter, used to tell me when I was young, she was like, I was so spoiled. You know, I could have become a nightmare of a person if I hadn't <laughs> met your father. She always said that. But she, um, she used to give an example of how spoiled she was. She used to tell me, in this house that they were building in Rye, they asked her if she could have anything, what did she want? And she said she wanted seven windows in her bedroom. And so she said, if you go, this house I believe is still there, I've never been, but if you go to this house, you can see in this one bedroom there are seven windows. She was like, that's how spoiled I was. Wow. I got seven windows because I well, asked so for it. And your, <laughs> and your mother was Foreman's only child, mm -hmm. and apparently he was, as they say, the. She was the apple in his eye. Right? Oh, so, yes, apparently, uh, yeah, yes. like everything. Yeah. So there's yeah. that beautiful picture of your mother sitting at his feet of the cello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so your recollections and your knowledge of Foreman, do they come more from your mother or your grandmother? Or is it just sort of a mix? You know, it's funny. Growing up, he was always there in the house in a sense. I mean, he was. we called him Poppy. Oh. I think that's what my mother called him, so it was always just Poppy. And so this was the 70s when I was a little girl and in New York City, and he was just ever-present. My grandmother remarried, but we were always going to concerts at Carnegie Hall and in Lincoln Center as a Feuermann family. So, And I grew up listening to his records, and at that time, still a lot of his contemporaries were still alive. And these people, these musicians, would always come to the house, so they were always, so his presence was ever present, so to speak. Mm. And um, 
so the stories I heard would be, my mother, he died when she was four, so she didn't have strong memories of him, and he was on tour a lot. But they came from my grandmother, and also from what I called my biddies, my tantas, my grandmother's cousins. I mean, the family tree gets a little convoluted, but for we always just call them cousins. And a lot of people emigrated to the States and in New York City, so I grew up with my tantas all around me and taking care of me. So I heard stories about him from various people, and everybody knew him. 